Where should our hands go? <laughs> <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of Unread Mail. I'm your host Kate Schmeiser and today we're joined by our guest, Jill Guest. Jill runs our email program here at SendGrid so she has some awesome insights to share while being on the front line of email. Thanks Kate. I'm really excited to be here today and I hope that I can fill Warren's shoes here on Unread Mail. Of course. So there are a lot of details that come together to create an email program, but I was hoping today we could just discuss a little bit around your overall approach with SendGrid's email program. Yeah, so our email program is based on what we call the subscriber first philosophy, which really just means that your responsibility is above all else to make sure that your subscribers feel appreciated and respected and that they maintain a really positive outlook on your brand. Yeah, it's kind of like if your subscribers ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Exactly. <laughs> so this subscriber first mentality is really based on three different pillars. The first being respecting the boundaries of your recipients. So aside from things like honoring unsubscribes and their preferences, it also means paying really close attention to the data, specifically engagement data and unsubscribe data, to make sure that you are being respectful of that line of overcommunication or overselling. And I know SendGrid, uh, we use a lot of suppression lists. How does that work? Yeah, so you'll have your universal suppression list. This is where you put things like unsubscribed addresses, invalids, or addresses that have a lot of bounces. We also use temporary suppression lists as a way to make sure that we are giving people a break that may be reaching that point of exhaustion with us. So if someone isn't engaging on many of your recent emails or maybe they've left some less than positive feedback about your brand, that's a good opportunity just to put that person on maybe a 30 or 45 day suppression list where they're not receiving any of your email to give them a little break. And that way when they receive email from you again after a, a short break, they may think of it as a breath of fresh air. <laughs> and they will be more likely to engage with that message. That's great, and email exhaustion, we talk about it often, it can be different for every recipient, right? So the fact you're doing that on a very personal, one-on-one -on -one basis is awesome. Yeah, it's really important, I think. And that sort of leads me to the second pillar, and that is making sure that you're making it a conversation when you send somebody marketing email. So in this day and age, we are really lucky as email marketers in that we have much more data on our recipients than ever before. So this goes beyond the demographic data and includes behavioral data and certain actions that that user has taken with your brand. Maybe pages on the website that they've visited or different features of your product that they've used. So if you can leverage these data points in your email marketing, it will feel to the recipient like you really are talking to them as an individual. And if they feel valued as an individual, they are more likely to share those feelings with your brand as well and see the human side to your brand. That's wonderful. So it's like building and maintaining that relationship. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And the third point is that it is really important that you as the email marketer are the advocate for your recipients. Because as a quality email marketer, you should be following deliverability best practices, you should be testing your campaigns continuously, and making sure that you're segmenting your lists. And if you're doing that, then you have a very clear idea of who your recipients are and what they will and will not appreciate. So when you have internal pressures to maybe sell a product really hard or be really aggressive and you know, doing a certain thing, it's, it's important that you are the voice of the customer in the room and that maybe you push back on some of those things if you know your subscribers will not appreciate it. Yeah, that's not necessarily the easy job to have to push nope. back, but it's very important. Yes, it's your responsibility and I think that it makes for a much healthier email program and much more loyal subscribers in the long term. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Um, if you are interested in receiving more email updates in your inbox, go ahead and subscribe to our blog, sendgrid.com slash blog. Otherwise, until next time, happy sending. Bye.